Hey, welcome back Cloud Scholars. Welcome back to all those on YouTube. I want to thank everybody for clicking on this video and watching. This is part three to creating a virtual machine. This is also a series within a series, which is the Azure uh, Terraform for Beginners series. So just to kind of do a real quick recap. Um, we have our objective. We are hired as an architect for MSP called Cloud Scholars. And our job is to set up a virtual machine, configure it, and then only allow access from our client's network, which would essentially be our network. Um, and then the password should have, uh, for the VM should be secured as well. So we were able to create a network security group. We created a network interface and associated that network interface with a security group. We were able to create a public IP address, associate the public IP to the network interface and then associate the NSG to the subnet. So the next thing we need to do now is create a virtual machine. In this video, I'll show you how to do that and then associate the network interface to the VM and then also have our network security group and define a, a rule to only allow access via a uh, customer's IP address. So as always, I'll have a link in the description uh, for this specific uh, um, uh, files. And it's it's the creating a virtual machine NSG rules part three start and code. And these are the main these are the, the three TIFF files that you will be working with to uh, follow along with this video. And always remember it should say start and code. So this way you know exactly which one you're looking at. And if it says finish code, that's one that you will need to um, look at at the end of the video, just in case you uh, were unable to follow through with the video, you made some kind of a mistake. You can always look at it and say, okay, what's the difference between my code and the code that I'm providing to you. Okay, so one of the first things we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna create our, our Windows virtual machine. So just be careful because if you go into Terraform, you, there is the Azure virtual machine um, and that one is deprecated, this one right here. Um, as you see right here, it says, um, the Azure virtual machine resource has been superseded by the Azure uh, RM Linux virtual machine and the Azure RM Windows virtual machine. So. Uh, you will have to go to either one of those if you are going to create a, a virtual machine. Uh, what we are going to be doing is the Windows virtual machine. So I'm going to go through here and look at this example usage. Uh, as you see here, it has a provider. We always need that. Our resource group is something else we're always going to need as well. Our virtual network, we need a place to put our virtual machine. Uh, our subnet as well that we have here, our network interface card that we have here that we have on our end as well. And then right here we have where the magic happens, our network, uh, our virtual machine. So I'm gonna copy this code right here and I'm going to bring over to our VS code. Okay, so over here, what I wanna do instead is I actually wanna create a new file and I'll say virtual machines.tf. So any virtual machines I'll place in there and I'm just gonna paste that. So we have resource Azure Windows virtual machine. I'm gonna call it MKT VM01 or marketing VM01. And then we're gonna have the name here, our resource group, as you know, local.resource group name. Our location is going to be local dot location. So now for our size, you have a bunch of different sizes that you can have here. Um, I think I'm going to go B four M S. I believe that's what it's called. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to leave it this way. I want to see it come up with an error message because it's going to give you uh, the different sizes that you have there. Um, but you know what, let's do it. B4 underscore MS. Um, I could do a standard D as well, but I'm gonna do a B4 MS. I believe that's what it is. Let's see if it gives us the error message. Error message is good to see because then we'll be able to see exactly what kind of errors you run into and how you can fix it. Plus it provides you the different uh, naming for your sizes. So for our admin user, we just gonna say, let's call it, that's fine. Admin user is fine. And then we can call it scholars one, two, three, dollar sign. Uh, our network interface uh, that we're gonna use for this and we're gonna be Azure network interface and we're gonna do MKT. Well, it came up twice. And we are gonna do ID, good. 
Now you see there's a comma here because you can have multiple network interfaces uh, associated with a uh, virtual machine. So this is a call out so you, so you know, so we had more network interfaces here, we can add additional network interfaces. So for our OS disk where, you know, uh, we're gonna have read, write, and then we're gonna standard uh, uh, LRS. And our source image, we're gonna do, you could do a Microsoft Windows Server. We could do a Windows Server 2016 data center um, with what we like. So we can change this up and we can do um, different types of uh, source image references. So we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're gonna do a, a Windows 11, uh, 21H2, um, and we're gonna make sure it's a Windows desktop as well. So what we, what we wanna do next is we're gonna do a Terraform plan. And I also forgot, I like to put this here, just it's really good, a good practice. So um, some things that we can use to make sure that this is working right, let's say if you were doing a bunch of code, uh, one thing I would wanna uh, say we wanna do is for depends is our network interface because we wanna make sure it has a network interface associated with it. And another one that we can do is as our resource, uh, let's do resource Azure RM. resource group and those are two right so if we look back at our code name we need our resource group we need uh the location there as well we could throw that in there if we wanted to um but we're going to do the resource group and we'll make sure that we have our network interface as well so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to do a terraform apply Let's say yes. Okay, so we got an error message. So let's see. So this is exactly what I was referring to. So this is good because this is what I wanted to see. So we didn't put our information incorrectly here, the standard B4MS. So we come down here, it's letting us know, say, hey, you know, this isn't correct. And it says create in resource group. Uh, it says virtual machine MKT virtual machine failure sending request status code 400. Size in the current region are standard and it's giving us the sizes. So let's see what I have wrong here. Um, and this is what I want to see. So standard B4MS. So what do I have stand for? So I have a this is wrong because you can look here. Uh, standard B4MS. So I went to one of the smaller sizes. I have a underscore here it's not supposed to be like that so i'll just paste it here so you can see how it's supposed to be and this is how i had it so let me back uh, undo and i'll do it that way but this is how it's all gonna look so you see i standard underscore e16 underscore v3 and this is exactly what i wanted you to see so this is a good error message and the great thing is you can even know exactly where the error lies at because one uh, in the very beginning, when I looked at it, it said our uh, failure send request status code equals 400 size in the current region R. So it lets me know right there, it's something with the size. And then if you come down a little bit lower, it gives you the line, right? It tells you exactly, hey, uh, uh, resource RM virtual machine. So you know exactly, okay, it's something within the virtual machine that's having the problem. So I'm gonna actually save that. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna do up, I'm gonna hit apply again. And let's see if we get any other error messages. I actually like when I see error messages because, you know, things, you know, sometimes people have stuff in their, their videos on YouTube and then you go through it and then you run into an error. Uh, one of the best ways to learn is learning how to troubleshoot and figure out, okay, where is the issue happening and how do I go about identifying that? So I like having those, these type of situations in the videos. All right, so we are back up and running. Uh, so if you look right here, we have our marketing VM01. Uh, right now it's in a stop state. I had to st uh, stop the video um, and then you know continue later on. I had to run out really quickly. Uh, so I'm f finishing and wrapping up this video um, right now, but you can see the marketing VM01 is created. Uh, so the thing is, let's look back and let's see exactly what, we, what else is our objective for this um, setup. 
So our task for this video was to create a virtual machine, but also associate the network interface to a VM. So we've done that. We created a virtual machine. We are associated with our network interface to the VM. So we're good in that section. Actually, let's go check out the uh, network interface. So we're over here back at the virtual machine and you can see it says marketing net interface and that's what we called it. So we had definitely associated it correctly. So let's just make sure we're not, I'm not lying here. And if we go back to our virtual machine, we see right here, it is the marketing net interface. So that is good. So what is the next thing that we need to do? So the next thing we need to do is we need to do a network security group, right? But we need to define a rule to only allow access to via a customer's IP address. Now, obviously we don't have a customer. Uh, this is just a scenario for learning. Uh, so what we'll have to do is I'm gonna tell you to use your public IP address and now isolate your network with your public IP address. And I'll show you exactly how you go about doing that. Throughout this whole video I've been, and the other videos, I've just showed you how to create a network security group, but I haven't showed you how to define any rules in a network security group. So back over at the Terraform page, we're going to look through the code that they provided to us and, you know, starts off a resource group again, and then it starts off a network security group. If you look here in our network security group, this is pretty much the block of code that we've been creating right here. Right. And then we have our tags, but we never really use the tags in the videos. Um, in the videos, I don't really show it too much tags, but we have this security rule. So you can create a network security group, but if you don't have any security rules, what Azure is going to do is give you the basic security rules, which is like, you know, you're, you're, you're not really going to have much to do uh, in terms of getting into the um, environment right into your network your subnet it's associated with so this security rule here is a test one two three it has a priority of 100 and it's an inbound so this is for inbound direction and access is allow so this could be allow or deny and then you have your different protocols tcp you have your source port range you have your destination port range and you have your source address prefix and your destination address prefix so let's go down a little bit so we can see um how this looks so these are what's required is the name, the resource group name, the location, and security rule is optional. Remember, we didn't do this any security rules, right? Um, and then we come down here for security rules. It's the name is required for it. The description, you don't necessarily have to have that. And the protocol. So these are the different protocols you can have. You have TCP, UDP, ICMP, all this other stuff here. And then you have your source port range. This is going to be, you know, if you know, like between 0 and 65,535. And this is going to be stuff like if you're going to say, you know, port, you know, 22 for, you know, like Linux or anything like that. Or you could do 3389 as RDP. Um, so you have all these different things that you can put in it, uh, for your source ports. Then you have your destination port, um, port range as well. And you have your address prefixes. So this is your source address prefix. So this is going to be stuff like, you know, if you're locking down your network, this is what we're going to be using with, within this video. So I'm going to walk you through this. Um, I'm going to show you in the Azure portal as well. But what I want to also show you is this is showing you to do a network security group and your security rules within your block of your network security group. You can also come here and you can do your security rules in its own block. So resource Azure network security rule, and then you need to tie it to, so it says resource group name, you now need to provide a resource group name and network security group name, you need to provide the network security group. So this is how we normally have it. And this is saying, okay, we do another block and then this block is going to have all our settings within it. Um, so uh, let me show you exactly what I'm referring to. All right, so back over at our code, what we are going to do is we're not going to create another block. We're actually just going to drop some security rules within our network security group. Um, and this is how your security rules can look. So if you want to have multiple security rules, you can do something like a security rule SSH, you know, 1001 priority inbound allow TCP. Um, source port range, you have everything, uh, destination port range, you're just doing 22. And this is, you know, um, you're allowing. So this is, this is a uh, allow that's very open, right? This is an RDP that is very open as well. Um, and then you also have a web. So if you want to do web traffic, you have some, you know, web servers that you're utilizing. You see this sort of destination port range. You have all this stuff where you have 80, uh, 443, so on and so forth. But we're, we're, we're not going to go ahead and do all this. So you don't have to worry about copying it. If you want to look through this code and copy it, um, I'm just going to go really slow here. So this way you can pause the video and you can see everything that you want and you want to take a look at it and try it out in your environment. That is great. But we're really, I'm, what I 
want to do is we want to stay on, on course of what we're supposed to do for this video, which is we need to lock down our network. So I'm going to take this out. And we want to make sure the client has access only to there. So, okay. So this is what you would want to do in order to, for you to get this uh, locked down, right? So you can say, okay, you name it RDP. You can name it whatever you want to name it. You can have your priority, which is, you know, one, I put 102, direction inbound, allow, TCP, source port range. We're doing um, all. And then we're doing a 3389 because, you know, it's going to be RDP. Uh, and then we're going to do our source address prefix. So that source address prefix, if you have your network or networks for your organization, that is exactly where you're going to be putting you for your like public IP addresses, right? So you're saying, okay, you know, I only want, you know, let's say you're, you have a group of virtual machines that are highly critical or whatever, right? Business critical machines. You can say, all right, I'm going to lock this down and I'm only permitting access from this network. Right. I'm only permitting access from these IP ranges. And this is where you would put your information. So if you wanted to find out what your IP address is, you can just do IP chicken. And you'd go to what is my IP address and you'd be able to get your IP address from IP chicken. Right. So um, that's how you would go about doing that. There's other ways, but, you know, you could just do it that way and you get your IP address in there. So what I want to show you is I want to go to our network security group. And our network security group is marketing that sec. And I just want to show you. So this is inbound set rules. So if I go to inbound set rules, this is how our security group is going to look because we didn't give it any rules yet. Now, I know I just added the information, but I didn't do a Terraform apply. So it's just going to give us the basic information. So if let's say if I wanted to add a new rule here, I would say, OK, you know, any IP address, my IP address, the system would put in my IP address in here or I could put the IP address in. And then you would put the source IP address, right? So this source IP address is the same thing that's what's referring to here, the source address prefix. And then your source IP your port ranges, you could put anything down, destination, you can do a specific destination um, within your network. So you see right here, it says destination IP address, C to range. So this is the specific, so you're locking it down to a specific subnet or whatever. Um, and you could put any if you want to, um, and then service, this is what we were talking about. This is RDP. Um, and then you have your protocols. You can have any, we have TCP right now and then allow as the action. And then our priority is this right here is our priority, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a Terraform run. Oh, I already had a terminal open. So I'm going to do Terraform apply. Okay, so now that we have our Terraform completed, let's take a look at our network security group. All right, so if we go to our network security group, you can see now we have this priority 102 RDP 3389 TCP, and we have the source IP address. But now let's say you have three different um, locations that you want to give access to so you're like hey i have a cloud architect over here i have a developer over here and i have a web design i don't know a web developer you have three people that you want to give access to and they're in other locations so what you can do is for this source ip okay so we're going to come back over here right so right now what we have is source address prefix but if you want to do more, we need to do source address prefixes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over to the code and add this line here. Okay, so back over at the code, what I did was I took out the source address prefix. So I had source address prefix like that. I just took that out. So you can take that out as yourself. And what I did was I put the same address back in here, but I did it as an array, right? So this is how it's supposed to take it. So I'm going to do Terraform apply. So you could just throw any address in there um, on your end, but you need to make sure it says source address prefixes, not prefix. And I'll click apply and it says apply complete. So if I come over and I do marketing and I do a refresh, now you see I have the two addresses showing up in here now. 
So that's looking good. We have our two addresses showing up in here and we should be fine. So let's go back and let's take a look and see what we've learned today. Okay, in this video, you're able to create a virtual machine. We were able to associate with a network interface. You were also able to do the network security group, which you already had defined already, but we also learned how to do the security rules. So you can do a security rule within the Azure uh, security um, uh, group, or you can do your own block of code for the security group as well. So what we did was we did our own uh, we did the security rule within the block of code of these uh, security group rather than having a block of code just for the security rule as well. And we were able to uh, define a rule to only allow access via a customer's IP address. Now, one thing I want to point out, if you remember, this machine isn't on. I'm just doing that just to save cost. But uh, this is a... Um, uh, Azure Virtual Desktop Machines, AVD. So this would be a multi-session machine that I've been utilizing. So this is one of the reasons why I wanted to, you know, it, it actually worked out. You know, I kind of just picked the machine, but it would be, make sense if you had, if you know about Azure Virtual Desktops, multi-session machines, so more, more than one person can log into the same machine and work. So this would work out perfectly fine in a real world scenario because you'd set it up in a certain way so that this way other people would be able to get into it. Now, the class that we're in is a B4MS. You wouldn't be using that because it'd just be too small and you'd run into issues with people like having like you know slow performance and so on and so forth but anyway just wanted to point that out so um i hope the information i provided you was beneficial we're going to continue doing some more learning uh within this series within a series uh the next one that we're doing is we still have more work to do because we also need to work with a key vault and then set up a secure password method uh, so that this way our code doesn't have our information like our passwords and so on and so forth so that this way people can log into the machine and do what they need to do. So I'm going to show you that in the next video um, and that's the end of this creating a virtual um, desktop uh, series within this Azure Terraform series that uh, for beginners that I'm working through. So you know, once again I want to thank you for watching this video. My name is Kieran Tross. If you haven't done so already please smash that like and subscribe button. If there's something that you're trying to learn within Terraform or anything aspect within Azure that you're like, hey, you know, I'm having an issue with this or whatever. I get messages all the time of people saying, hey, can you create a video for this? And I go about it and I create the video. It may take me like a month or probably two months because I have other video ideas that I'm working on or that's just working through this list of ideas. I want to thank you for watching this video. My goal here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time. <laughs>